<laughs> it's confusing enough with two, never mind. Yeah. <laughs> so, whenever I interview Dennis, I like to start off by getting a feel for the audience. How many people here are checked in at the moment? Wow. Right. Thank you. Great. So we know what we're talking about. All right. um, it makes my job much easier. You guys know how this stuff works. So last year I interviewed you around this time, and at that time you guys were adding somewhere between 15,000 and 20,000 users per day. Yeah. Where are you guys at today? What do the numbers look like? Yeah. Well, we're uh, we're getting pretty close to hitting 10 million users. Um, and I think it's going to happen in the next two week or so. I don't know the exact date, but. Uh, yeah, it's growing very, very quickly. We're still picking up um, about a million users a month. I guess you know it's, it's getting uh, a little bit quicker every month, and uh, it's growing real quick. It's great. Mm -hmm. And you guys kind of, what do you think you guys need to do to take it to the next level and kind of make, I guess, what people would call mainstream and be on the level of a Facebook or Twitter? Yeah, or like we, we just had a, a big company meeting um, on Tuesday about you know just about this topic. Like, okay, we're at 10 million users. Like now, what? Right. So how do you get from 20 million users? How do you get to 50 million users? And there's a lot of friction in the app. Like you guys have checked in, like you know, sometimes it takes you know 20, 30 seconds. Like it shouldn't be the case. It should take you 10 seconds, 15 seconds, maybe five seconds to check in. So it's one of the things that we're working on. The other thing is like, you know, how do you just get people? Like how do you take all the rich content that's in Foursquare and you, you know, apply it to people that don't want to check in all the time, or just people that are out walking around the street and experiencing things? Like I think Twitter had a big aha moment when they realized like. Hey, the measure of active users isn't necessarily the people that are just tweeting, it's the people that are consuming those tweets. And we're finding the same thing in the Foursquare ecosystem. That you know, it's great that we have all these people checking in, but like there's you know, there's millions of more people that can benefit from all the check-in information, uh, all the tips, all the photos that people are contributing into our ecosystem. Mm -hmm. And that was part of your last release before South by Southwest was like the explore tab. Yeah. Yeah, that's I mean that was like our big magic trick. It's like people thought like, oh I'm checking in with points and badges and the leaderboard, but it's like really every check in counts. It goes into this algorithm that helps us figure out like what are the best places in New York? Like what are the places that you're gonna find interesting in Boston? Um, where are the places I should go in Paris? Like we have algorithms that can determine this stuff based upon the check in history of millions and millions of users. Mm -hmm. And what are you guys seeing in terms of how people are now using the service? What are some kind of interesting anecdotes or even Looking at the stats, how are people using this different service differently today than they were a year ago? You know, it's um, it, it really hasn't changed that much. You see, like obviously, a lot more activity, and when there's more activity in the ecosystem, like people are getting a lot more value out of it. I think you know one of the things that's really changed uh, in the last year is how much the merchants have adopted the platform. So now there's almost, I mean, there's more than 400,000 merchants that are using the Foursquare platform to offer loyalty discounts and to offer check-in specials and you know discounts if you have a swarm there if you bring five friends and you know some of the most interesting stuff it, it evolves out of what you see the merchants doing. Um, you know there's this example we always use in the East Village, like Luke's Lobster, where they you know took their best users across multiple places and or their best customers across multiple places in New York and they you know use that data to invite those those customers to a special event. And you know that's like one example out of thousands that we're seeing really all, all around the country and all around the world. Mm -hmm. Something else on the merchant front, back at South by Southwest, you guys ran an experiment with American Express. Mm -hmm. um, I'd love to hear kind of how that went and where we might see that going in the future. I know recently we've seen a number of companies make similar partnerships. Yeah, kind of curious as how you're tying check-ins and Foursquare to the real world activity of purchasing and what that means for the game. Yeah, so we're doing a lot of experiments here. Did anyone try the MX thing at South by Southwest? Right? Yeah, so you guys, for the, the few folks that tried it here, um, basically you were able to sync your MX card with your Foursquare account. Um, and then at, I think we had like 50 different places in Austin. Instead of having to show the special to the, the hostess or the, or the waiter or the waitress, you could just say, hey, I want to add this special onto my card. And then when you swiped your MX card to pay, the deduction came right off your bill. So it was like a frictionless version of a, of a coupon. It didn't involve the venue at all. It was very, very interesting. Um, so we did that as a trial to see if it would work technically, to see if users would, um, would understand the concept. And it worked great. Like, uh, we were psyched about it, and we were psyched about it. And so now we're, you know, we're, we're continuing to talk to those guys about, like, right, what is the second stage of this trial? Like, like, do we blow it out nationwide? Do we do it with, it with other retailers? And so we're still uh, continuing to talk to them to figure out what the next, the next step is going to look like. When do you think we might see more of it? Um, I don't know. We don't have a specific date plan for them, but uh, yeah, hopefully we'll see. Mm -hmm. Another interesting piece of technology you guys have been experimenting with is NFC. Sure. I know you guys have something to do go I.O. First off, for the audience, explain a little bit what this technology is. Yeah, do you, does anyone here have NFC on their phone? Do you like five hands that go up? <laughs> no, no hands that go up. Does anyone here have a Nexus S? Hands that go up? 
Okay, good. I was going to try to catch you and be like, well, if you have an FSS, you have an FSS. <laughs> um, but you guys know NFC, and it's the thing that you, you, know, you tap it against the, the cab in order to, to pay for your cab fare. It's like almost like mobile speed pass in a sense. You can tap it at the gas register to pay for your gas. Um, you know, we think about NFC as it gets built into phones as a way to do frictionless check-ins. I should be able to, you know, tap my phone on a menu and it checks me in automatically, or tap it on a, uh, on a storefront to say, hey, what are the what are the tips my friends have left here, or do I want to add this to my first quick to-do list? Uh, we have an experiment that's running in the office. Like right when you get off the elevator, you can tap your phone up against the wall. It's a little Foursquare sticker there, and it will automatically check you in. And so, you know, in order for this stuff to, to take off, first of all, a lot more people have to raise their hands when I ask about <laughs> NFC or ask about who has it in their phones. Um, uh, and then also, we got to get those those readers everywhere. You know, like there's just, there's there's nothing to really tap your phone against. Even if you're you're one of the lucky few to you know have an NFC um, reader on your phone, you have nothing to tap it against. So that stuff will will take a little bit of time. But it's stuff that we're actively thinking about. Mm -hmm. Something else, I, I pulled my Twitter followers and asked them what they were curious about um, in preparation for this interview. One thing they brought up was the idea of being able to check into things other than physical locations. So yep. checking into a TV show, which a number of startups are doing, checking into events. Are you guys working on anything there? Yeah, well, it's, um, this has come up a number of times like in the history of the, of the company. We have to decide, as a, you know, as a relatively small team, what are the things that we want to focus on? What are the things that we're most passionate about? And we've, we've kind of you know, strayed away from that path. Um, you know, we've thought about it for, do we want to check into TV? Do we want to check into websites? Do we want to do, you know, check into songs that you're listening to? And we've decided against it. Um, I think one of the strongest things about Foursquare and one of the ways that we're starting to position ourselves against different competitors is that you know, we're all about helping people navigate the real world. Like, we want your experience when you're away from your laptop or away from your desktop computer, when you're out and walking around and with your friends. We want to help you, um, you know, have better experiences in the physical world. And so, you know, for us, it seems like the best, the best thing for us to focus on is physical locations and the relationship between uh, people and physical places. So we've decided to punt on a lot of stuff for now. Mm -hmm. Moving on to the financial side of things, are you guys making money? Are you guys profitable? We, we do generate revenue um, from some of the stuff that we've done, the media partnerships and some of the branded badges that we've done. Uh, we're not profitable, but uh, the point isn't to become profitable right now. The point is to grow as quickly as, as possible, to really push the boundaries of what you can do with location-based services on mobile devices. Uh, and you know, as you can see, what we're doing with the merchant platform, we're running a lot of like, interesting experiments with with you know small coffee shops, with great big national retailers, with big uh, big national brands, to try to see like what is the winning formula for location-based services, social software, and mobile devices. Mm -hmm. And I think as we're as we're starting to learn from that, as we're starting to figure out more of that, our monetization plan starts to become a little bit more clear. Mm -hmm. um, we've got a lot of amazing stuff that'll be coming, um, you know, later on this year. And I think you know it'll make a lot more sense to people as we start rolling some of that stuff mm -hmm. out. But what about daily deals? There were rumors. Uh, a little while ago, you guys were in talks with ThruCon about something sort of partnership or maybe something even larger like an acquisition. How do you kind of view the daily deal space and what might we see there? Yeah, well, it's, it's, it's interesting. I mean, there's, have you guys done daily deals here? Have anyone done a like Groupon or Living Social? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of good deals to be had out there. And so, you know, I think of uh, Foursquare kind of plays in that ecosystem too. Like, we don't have daily deals, but we have Foursquare specials that are based off of your check in history and your loyalty. And, you know, I think it would be interesting to take some of those daily deals and, and suck them into the Foursquare ecosystem. And, you know, we think about, we think a lot about different ways that we could do that. Um, ultimately, I think, you know, what Groupon and Living Social are doing are, um, you know, they're teaching a lot of local merchants that, uh, you can actually you can use the internet to help drive customers into your store, and that's ultimately going to be good for Foursquare. Like one of our big challenges is going to be, hey, how are we going to teach all these local merchants about you know this this new generation of, of tools that are meant just for them? And Groupon and Living Social are doing a lot of that for us. Which is great. Mm -hmm. Now, which brings us to an interesting point in terms of going back to the valuation thing. Mm -hmm. You guys are rumored to be raising money in the five hundred million dollar range in terms of your value. Today, you saw Pandora go public. Valued somewhere around three or four billion dollars, which is 30 to 40 x their sales in 2010. Do you kind of feel like we're in a bubble right now? Kind of. I mean, we're we're still focused on on what we're doing. That like it's hard to really comment on what everyone else is. Um, we try not to comment on a lot of the fundraising stuff, but it's definitely a really interesting climate to be a part of. Um, you know, I think one of the one of the most interesting things is that the businesses are a lot different than they you know they were the last time that people were, were saying, oh, we're in a bubble. You know, it's like. There's internet companies that are making real money. We've got you know, 10 to 100 times more people that are actually online. Like we're seeing companies that are able to do a lot more with, uh, 
with you know a lot fewer resources because it's easier to do things in the web space now. So I mean the climate's really a lot different than it was in the past. Mm -hmm. And what does Foursquare's future kind of look like financially? You guys raising more money right now? Do you see an IPO in the future? Yeah, it's you know it's like the company's in a really good position right now. So um, you know we're really just focused on, on building the best products that we can. You know so. Uh, of course, like we're always thinking about you know, different opportunities, whether it's fundraising or working with other companies. But like the big focus is like how do we make the products uh, the best they can possibly be, so that like more hands uh, and more rooms in the country go up. And yeah, like, who's been checking? In. Yeah. So talking about the technology piece, what do you kind of see as the next big trends in terms of what's going to change for Square? We talked a little bit about NFC, but where do you see location platforms going in the next two, three, five years? Yeah, I think it's you know this this idea of. Um, you know, for so long we've been conditioned that if you have a question, you ask your phone for the answer. And that means that like, I think of a question in my head and then I pull my phone out of my pocket and I type in something and I get an answer from the magical device. Um, I think, you know, some of the stuff that we're trying to explore and the things that we're working towards, it's like, you know, the phone is this network sensor. You carry it in your pocket, you can sniff out, you know, where you are, like from your Foursquare history, we know who your friends are, we know the places that you've been to, we know the types of places you'd like to go to. Um, you should be able to like preemptively buzz in your pocket and let you know about all the interesting things that are happening nearby. Uh, and I think that's that's going to be a new way that people start using their devices. And I think as technology matures a little bit, as battery life gets better, as GPS technology gets a little bit better, um, we're going to start to be able to uh, really iterate this space very quickly and start trying out a lot of these new ideas. Yeah. On a related note, I mean, you guys have an app platform, and there's been a lot of things built on top of that. What are some cool innovations you're seeing there? What are some of your favorite apps that have utilized Foursquare's API in the last? Few months. Yeah, there's the, the Foursquare ecosystem is kind of amazing. I don't know if there's any API developers here, but there's almost 10,000 developers that we have um, that, are, that are working on things. Uh, it, some of the best stuff is the stuff that like we're really excited about. We just don't have the time to build. Um, <coughs> I've seen um, I've seen this company Sonar.me that uses it to uh, you know to take people that are in a similar space, whether it's in the same venue or the same neighborhood, and be like, oh, these are people that you might want to meet based on similar interests. Uh, there's an app called a Don't Eat app which is after you connect it to your Foursquare account and you check into places, it will send you back a text message if the place has a lousy health inspection, um, you know, like a restaurant inspection. <laughs> so it's like, I know I've been to my favorite, you know, my favorite restaurant in East Village and I check in and it's like, you know, don't eat here because they only got a 43 out of 100. Right? Important, Important to check in before the meal or not. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Another incentive to check in ahead of time. So, yeah. you know, you're seeing um, like all sorts of people take, you know, the, the kind of like the foundation of the Foursquare platform, like where people are at a given time, and then combine it with other data sources. And really interesting things are starting to come from that. Mm -hmm. Now how about brands? Last year it was kind of all about badges. Have we seen the way brands use Foursquare evolving? Yeah, I mean like the, the badge thing is, is still going very strong. It's very difficult for us to keep up on demand. It's a really challenging as a small company. Um, you know, what we're really trying to get brands to think about is like, how do you create a lens on top of the real world? So like the New York Times, for example, like if the New York Times was a Foursquare user, like what tips would they be leaving for folks? And we're seeing them, them do that. Like they leave restaurant tips, they leave travel tips. Like we've got New York Magazine and then, you know, we want to time out New York on the system as well. You know, the big question is like, how do we do this for consumer brands as well? Like what does it look like for, you know, for a Starbucks or, you know, consumer packaged food brands? And we're still trying to answer some of those questions. Um, it's been great so far to see, you know, we've got, I don't know what the number is, but I think almost like a thousand brand pages, a thousand different brands are experimenting with Foursquare. And it's all about them creating like layers on top of the real world that help people experience the world through like the, you know, the, the eyes of that particular brand. Mm -hmm. Last question, we are here in New York. Um, you guys are kind of a very proud New York startup. You were honored actually uh, last week at the Made in New York at the yeah. Mayor's House. Um, what do you kind of make of the New York startup scene right now? Where's it going? How much has it evolved in the last year? Yeah, it's, uh, you know, we started in 2009, and it was like a very difficult time to go out and fundraise. And um, you know what you're seeing too is <coughs> is completely different. Like there's a whole bunch of West Coast or even like you know um, East Coast shops that started setting up um, offices in New York. There's a lot more entrepreneurs. Uh, I think the big difference um, this time around, uh, specifically from my perspective, is that there's people that have done this before. Like I'm a second, you know, second generation entrepreneur. We've got like there's Zach Klein's and Chris Dixon's and you know, there's a whole bunch of folks that are able to go out and start mentoring the people that are doing this for the first time. And that's something that we didn't have when we did this with, the, you know, with Dodgeball back in 2005. There just wasn't that support system and that, that ecosystem. And now it seems like it's, um, oh, that's like, it's like the, you know, the Oscars or something. <laughs> but no, it's, it's a completely different environment than it was before. It's, it's becoming very entrepreneurial. Great. Dennis, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you guys for having me.